Hi guys, today we will talk about the interleaved configuration of a, of a book converter, of a back converter. So you do remember the back converter, you have the input voltage and you have uh, the switch, which we call the Q, and uh, another switch, which we call the Q negated, and the inductor L, which uh, is important to transfer energy to the output with the capacitor C and the load R. Now, you know that the back converter, you, you, the most important waveform are the B-switch and the inductor current uh, IL. When the, the B-switch is, uh, is high, it means that the high side is down and so the inductor is, car is charging like this. When the V-switch, remember that the V-switch is equal to the VDS of the low side. So when the, um, the VDS of the low side is zero, it means that the Q negative is conducting and the current is circulating in this direction here, meaning that uh, the inductor is, is discharging. Now, what is the problem of this configuration? When you want to go in very high power, uh, like uh, 3 kilowatt, uh, even uh, 2 kilowatt, and etc. Uh, putting uh, parallel switches uh, may not be enough, uh, just because uh, uh, when you have uh, high currents, uh, it is very hard to find inductor which can sustain 60 or 70 amps. So imagine to have uh, something like, uh, uh, like uh, 12 volts at the input, and 10 volts at the output, but you have uh, you have the you, you must you must make the circuit flow at least 100 amps. In this kind of configuration, you may find switches strong enough, and with even with a parallel configuration, you may find switches strong enough to do this. But for the inductor, mm, it's another story. It would become very 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 bulky, so it it is naturally not employed this solution. What designers, do, what designers do is to use the interleaved configuration, which uh, basically is to use another phase uh, like this uh, with another inductor. In this way, the load current uh, it is split between the inductor L1 and the inductor L2. Now, if the two phases, uh, which are a V-switch 1 and a V-switch 2, act independently, you do have to remember that the duty cycle must be the same, since the output is the same. So, it can be like this. But uh, you can't have uh, this switch one uh, like this, and this switch two like this. Not because for the, the, the superimposition, that is not a problem, but because the duty cycles are not the same. So this, conf this configuration is banned. So let's open the spice and let's see what we, we can do. We can recycle the, the back converter of the last lecture, of the last lecture just by... Uh, just because uh, the, the, last bus, the last back converter has... Um, as a, a very good way to generate the, the time which I like. And since we'll be using the, um, the synchronous configuration, this can be very handy. So let's run the simulate. So let's call this file um, interleaved. One kilowatt interleaved back converter. If you do run the simulation, you see that we have the square, the triangular wave. The duty cycle D, which is not in the half, but we can we can set that, and then we have the PWM generation, which generate uh, the gate voltages that we need to drive uh, the um, the two MOSFETs like this. Zero dot four and zero dot six. So now what we can do is to use the interleaved configuration but before doing that we need to make sure that we have another driving system so basically we could technically just copy and paste the circuit 
but uh, the that would not be the ideal case uh, the general case is that when you have v switch 1 which is not in phase with v switch 2 something like this be careful that this is not d and d minus 1 these are always d d d d d and this is v switch 1 and this is v switch 2 the interesting thing is that you have two, inter two different intervals in which the two inductor current are charging and what you have at the end is the sum IL1 plus IL2 which is something uh, not so easy to compute by hand um, so what I should do is to copy the, archi the architecture here which I explained in the last lecture so I can copy, the I can copy this because this is uh, uh, Ah, first let me check the load. So the load is so the load here is just uh, ah it is it is oscillating. Uh, we can put twenty volts and we can uh, put uh, one zero zero dot one to have uh, uh, to have uh, a higher power. Now since we are in, in one kilowatt range, it is uh, mandatory. I I'd say. To add a parallel configuration like this. So first let's check without the interleaved configuration what is going on. Okay, it is oscillating a bit, that is it that it is to be expected. Let me put uh, let me put just 0 0.5 because it is easier to check the results. We have 20 volts, so we expect to have 10 volts at the end. And as you can see, we have 10 volts, more or less. But we are losing some voltage because we have a very high current, like 100 amps. We do have this current here, and the power is 1 kilowatt, as we intended. The problem is that uh, you you can't find easily an inductor which sustains this current here, 100 amps. Now, if we check the dissipation of the MOSFETs, they are high as well. 6 watts is very, very high. So even though we put two MOSFETs in parallel, you see that the dissipation is still high. Even from the low side, 3.8 watts is very high. Now, if I make the interleaved configuration like this, it would be basically by copying everything like this. Connect the input like this and connect the output like this. Now we could leave the circuit uh, now we could leave the circuit as it is, but you won't be in the general case uh, like I wanted to show. This is the case in which uh, both phases are acting simultaneously, but it is not the ideal case. If you now check everything again, we see that we have just one, just the half of the current flowing into this inductor. And 50 amps is something that the inductor can achieve. So this is just more, so this is just more feasible. If you check the voltage and check the power, it is even higher because we are losing less. Now, if you check the dissipation of the MOSFET, it is just 2.4 watts, which is more achievable than before. It is still very high, don't get me wrong, but more achievable than before. Probably you should choose another MOSFET with less gate charge to have less dissipation. Remember that the I side does a lot of switching losses, so the gate charge is crucial here. Anyway, we are the, we are driving the the two I side with the same gate driver, but it is not. But is this is not the ideal configuration. So what we need to do is to replicate exactly like this. We replicate the structure. This structure here, what what it does is to give a dead time. Oops, I cancelled. We plug everything like this, 
because the dead, the dead time structure is something that we want to keep and uh, but what we what we have to do now is to uh, translate just the triangular waveform now i put 250 kilohertz at the switching frequency so it is reasonable to say that the, the that the period is one over the switching frequency and so uh, we can uh, translate uh, this triangular waveform here just to make an example by half the switching by half the period of switching so we say that the delay of this guy is ds over 2 now we run again the simulation oops double definition for td Uh, probably uh... ah sorry I, I put the same node sorry my bad so let me put the delay which is uh, yes over two Ah, sorry, even here D is the same, but it, it but D is the same, of course. But again, don't get me wrong. Okay, so now first let's compare the two triangular waveform. They should be the same, but with a delay of TS. Oh, indeed they are. So now let me check. Uh, um, let me check the the switches. Okay, I probably did. Ah, uh, uh, the names are the same. Ooh. Let, let, let me toggle the nets. Sorry, 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 sorry. The, the nets are the same, so. Okay, let me check the two switching voltages. Okay, so I, as we can see, I am... Um, um, the, two, the, the, the two switching waveform are different and the two inductor currents are acting separately like this so uh, what we have at the end uh, i should have prolonged the simulation a bit more my bad let's wait a bit more Okay, so now it is enough. You see that the output voltage has not changed and the power has not changed as well. So everything is like the same. The dissipation has changed a bit. 2.17. Naturally, uh, there are controllers which... Ah, as you can see, the power is split differently. So uh, naturally, um, in real life, controllers, controllers uh, does actually this. They... Uh, they manage the phase uh, as they want so you you will have a controller which of course uh, manages everything on its own so as you can see this is the phase one sorry this is the phase two and this is the phase one oh uh, this is wrong and let me capture this so um now what we should look uh, is the current at this node here which is the sum so as you can see, the sum of these two current, which, which has doubled the ripple, um, it is the sum of the IL1 and IL2, basically. Which is indeed reported as I, ICR1 plus IR1, but uh, it is the same. So basically, we are... Uh, um, so basically, the current which is arriving here has doubled, has doubled the frequency of the, of the inductor ripple. Meaning that... Uh, it's, uh, it is like uh, operating at a higher frequency. As you can see here, I have uh, uh, a ripple uh, which is not, uh, which is double the, uh, uh, which is double the frequency that I choose. I can verify this uh, with the FFT using the, the Kroenig zoom extent. As you can see, I have, uh, I have uh, something in the range of, 
they are very 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 small ripple by the way it's really hard to check oh garim as you can see i have some some components which is very very low but i do have something at 450 kilohertz so i have less ripple with this topology at double the, re at the double the switch frequency that i choose this is interesting and this is actually a property of the interleaved configuration this is this is very interesting and uh, other consideration which can we can give uh well the current is split as i said before and uh, yes the passive are, are less stressed and we have even less ripple at the output I think that we can close the video here. Let me save the title with uh, one kilowatt interleaved back converter. And we are done here. Thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video.